Hello everyone. Topic for today is ECMAScript 2020 in GLS Orchestrator. First of all, I would like to thank everyone who has joined this session and also to VMworld for having me and allow me to present a worldwide community. So a little bit about me. So my name is Mayang Goel. I am working as a module lead in Thales International India. And uh, I've been in touch with the VMware technology for the last six years. So I have a good experience on uh, its tool set and the concepts. My primary, primary skill is VRO and VRA. I'm also an active contributor at VMware VRO community. I maintain a Git repository for VRO code samples. Whatever I do, I try to put it there for anyone to use it. So if someone asks me uh, my feelings about VMware, so I would say I'm very passionate about VMware. Uh, as a company and as a technology, I think it's revolutionary. So I am really passionate about it. My hobbies are to play chess, listening to music, and uh, long drive, and learn new things. So the agenda of this session would be uh, what's ECMAScript and why we are so bothered about it, uh, the relationship between ECMAScript and VRO. Uh, we will also look into the problem that we are dealing with that I'm trying to uh, cover in this session. And I will also look for the, I, we will also discuss on the things that we are currently having, the solutions that we can use to at least solve, a, solve the, that problem to some extent. And ultimately what we want. So the ultimate solution that I'm looking for that I, I, I'm trying to appeal to VMware uh, uh, engineers to deploy in further releases in VRO. So before starting this session, I have some questions to all VRO VRA developers. So do you ever feel that you are missed out when you know it comes to your JavaScript skills? Do you feel frustrated by using the same outdated version of JavaScript? Or do you feel and do you miss those new features and you know tempting features that are available in the new code, new JavaScript uh, uh, versions? but are absent in your JavaScript code? If the question to all these questions, or uh, if the answer to all these questions is yes, then we are on the same page. So first of all, what is ECMAScript and why we are talking about it today? ECMAScript is a general purpose programming language standardized by ECMA International according to the document ECMA 262. So there's a document which gives us the uh, you know the standard the protocols and javascript is a general purpose scripting language that implements the ecmascript specification as described in ecma 262 so if we say what is the difference between ecmascript and javascript ecmascript is basically a standardization of uh, uh, basically the it's a specification which is uh, you know standardized in the document ECMA 262, while uh, JavaScript is a programming language that implements that spe specification. So currently we have almost eight standards, eight uh, editions of ECMAScript starting very, uh, very early from 2011. There are uh, earlier versions as well, but they are abandoned now. So they are not in use anyway. They are totally abandoned. Now, I would like to highlight, highlight and I would like to shift a focus to the version 5.1. Just remember that it is released in June 2011. Moving on. What is the relationship between ECMAScript and VRO? So VMware Realize Orchestrator is a workflow automation solution designed to simplify the automation of complex IP tasks by leveraging JavaScript engine, which is Mozilla Rhino 1.7 R4. So basically all these automation things, all these automation of these tasks is done using a programming language, which is JavaScript. However, 
this engine only supports ECMAScript 5 and some new features of ECMAScript uh, ES 5.1. So if you remember from the last, last slide that ES 5.1 was released in 2011. Mm -hmm. And where are we now? We are in 2021. It, it is almost 10 years. I mean, 10 years is a long, long time when it comes to, you know, coding and uh, coding practices and standards. So what, what is the outcome there? The outcome is that we, uh, as a JavaScript developer, are lacking many of the modern JavaScript features, such as for of loop, arrow functions, classes, inheritance, you know, new data types, the various new methods, just to name a few. There are so many things. So as you can see, the Rhino here mm -hmm. seems to be outdated and very slow. Moving on. So currently, what all solutions we have and what up to what stage are we have we reached and what new things we can do to mitigate this issue? I mean, this is a serious issue. Probably not many people will understand the issue that why uh, I am so bothered about it and why I'm talking about it right now in such a in detail manner and so on. But, you know, when someone go to the market for, uh, you know, for look, looking for a new opportunity and looking for a change, being a VRO developer, you have to have good JavaScript skills. No one talks about the JavaScript you know, that we are using, but the JavaScript that is actually available in the market. JavaScript is quite was in recent times. I mean, there's so much of upgradation and it is being used in almost everywhere. There are so many new concepts and so many new features arrived in JavaScript, but where are we? We are still using 5.1. 5.1 is quite outdated, quite, uh, simple, there's, there's no nothing much to do as a you know, modern day programming language. Okay, so I'm not saying that there's no work being done and no one is looking into it. There are definitely some work uh, done in recent times. Uh, we have seen in 2018 that, uh, you know, the VMware PSCOE team developed some build and developer tools. Yeah, it's basically, which is also mentioned here, it is basically a full-fledged system. It is an integration between v, Visual Studio Code and VRO. So that allows you to write uh, you know, code in TypeScript and then it will convert the code directly into, uh, into JavaScript back and uh, inject it directly into VRO. It is, it is there, there is something that we can use, but that, that solution is not still concrete. I mean, it is not very reliable not many of the uh, organizations are using it even if the engineers you know you know give assurance that we can uh, implement that first thing it is quite uh, complex the implementation is not very easy i also tried it uh, we were using it earlier but let's let's see the all the all the tools that we have so first of all we have a vro typescript compiler so it is a custom type, TypeScript to JavaScript compiler using the TypeScript compiler API. So basically it transpires the TypeScript code simply to VRO compatible JavaScript code, uh, which handles you know, uh, module resolution classes and polymorphism as well as ECMAScript six chimps. So it, basically it will convert all such things into plain uh, VRO compatible JavaScript. However, the challenge here is that you must know if you were, you have worked on Java, uh, sorry, VRO, that VRO doesn't take the simple plain JavaScript code. It requires, it has a proprietary XML format in which it has to be converted before feed, before being fit to VRO. So again, it is again a challenge for the VRO developer to, you know, write that code and then in, in Visual Studio code and then uh, paste it in a manner that it will work. So it is again a challenge. If, uh, this, this challenge can only be faced by a VRO developer. If uh, not many people can understand that. Now, so I mean to say there are challenges with that tool as well. Now we have VRO XML Explorer. So this Explorer is somewhat, you know, uh, 
simplifies the process of converting that uh, VRO proprietary XML into plain code. So this tool is also present uh, and we can use the tool. There is one more tool. Uh, again, I've mentioned that the PSC, PSCOE team developed the build and uh, developer tool. So it was fully integrated, fully, uh, fully fleshed, you know, a complex uh, set of tools that uh, get the job done. You have to write the code in uh, TypeScript. TypeScript is, is a subset or superset of JavaScript. So basically any code written in JavaScript will work in TypeScript as well. Fourth step is polyglotism. So simply, if you, if you are feeling a problem about uh, JavaScript in your VRO uh, editor, simply move, move it out. You just move on to some other language. What you can do, you can move to Python, Node.js, PowerShell. You can write the code there. These languages allow even extensibility uh, because they can import, because we can import third party packages there. So if you are feeling you know, left alone, you're feeling outdated, just move on to uh, something uh, different. Just move to other language. However, all these things, and probably there are other tools, which maybe I am not aware of, but all such things, they just don't solve the problem. So what do you want? What should be done? So I, as I mentioned, PSCOE team is working a lot of work, uh, doing a lot of work to make the VRO better. I, I really appreciate their effort I, and I thank them. But what we are currently looking for and what you know, the future release of VRO should have is you know, upgrading to other Java-based, uh, Java script engines like V8 from Google. You know, so the, because currently, VRO tool is based on Java. It is it is developed on Java, and the Java script engine that we are using is Mozilla Rhino, which is also based on Java. So I won't say that you change the core core, core uh, uh, pillar of VRO. You, I I am not saying that VMware should work on you know uh, developing VRO from scratch uh, in some other language. I'm saying you keep it as a java product java application just use any new java um, javascript engine we can also use uh, you know trans compilers like babel to convert the new generation the next generation javascript code to javascript 5.1 standards so java is, babel is a very good tool However, the, the integration between, you know, from Babel to VRO is what has to be done. We can also develop Visual Studio Code plugin that can achieve similar results, but someone has to write it. Someone has to work on it. Implementing a tighter VRO and Python, you know, uh, Node.js relationship, which uh, will also eventually allow developers to move completely to those languages and leave JavaScript behind. So uh, the last thing, the polyglotism uh, functionality of VRO, it is there and I really appreciate it. And I, it is really uh, good to you know, have something new in VRO. Uh, if someone is working from past uh, you know, seven, eight years in, uh, in VRO, uh, having such functionality is really good. But all of us know that the, the three new languages that we have are not completely integrated. There is still a gap and it is very complex. No one wants to implement the code in these languages as easily they work in JavaScript. So I think we will eventually reach to a stage where we will you know, start using Python and Node.js uh, or PowerShell as easily and as uh, practically as we used to have when we used to work with JavaScript. So in future, there is a possibility that we can skip all those three steps that I mentioned above and we simply move, you know, left to JavaScript behind. We can, we say Tata to it and we just move on to these languages. But for that, we have to have a better integration. So 
the outcome of this presentation this session is either we drop it or we should catch it so thank you everyone i hope you would like it and that's it thank you so much have a good day bye bye